The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Howdy, 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 everybody, and welcome to Thespian Talk. We were gone last week, but we're back now. Uh, I am your host, Goma the Ranting Thespian, and with me is the cat. Hello, everyone. And we have Miss Michelle back with us again. Hello. Yes. Uh, so yeah, like I said, we weren't here last week because just everything just pretty much just broke down. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's how it felt like on my end. And I mean that physically because I just could not even. My body is like, no, you're not doing shit. And I'm like, yeah, fine. <laughs> Fucking body being... <laughs> uh, but you're so, better now. Yeah, I am, I am better now. Uh, especially since within that within that time we got another episode of the junk drawer out, which should be up on the feed as I'm talking now. Uh, still working on getting a video version of that up to go up on YouTube, so I can use that for the site instead of telling people, "Hey, just click this link; you'll go to Anchor and listen to it." Um, so that way they just click the video and there it is. <laughs> oh lordy! Uh, so it's been two weeks. Uh, Cat, how have you been these past two weeks? Oh, <laughs> it's it's been a couple of two weeks. So. It's all right. It's all right. I'm trying not to have like everyday panic attacks just due to stress. So. Yeah, that's where I'm at. My 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 convention that I run every year is is a uh, in just over a month. So I'm kind of in like all of my hair falls out this time of year mode. Yeah. Um, and and then in the last month, both of my grandmothers have been in and out of the hospital. Oh, Jesus. So, yeah, it's been a... I, if we could just, you know, like, erase all of 2019, like, if Thanos could erase, like, just snap <laughs> and erase half of 2019, that would have been great. Yeah. Oh, that would, that, would, that would be a good thing. Although, there would be some things I wouldn't want to erase, like the fact that nah. I, I went down to... Panama City Beach yesterday, which they're, you know, Panama City, Panama City Beach area, they got, you know, they were like right there getting hit with Hurricane Michael, and they seem to be recovering very well. There are some places that are obviously not open. Um, there are some places that are still rebuilding. At, they, at one point they said they weren't going to reopen the mall down there in like Panama City itself, but but I'm seeing stores opening up, and I was like, well, maybe, maybe they changed their mind. I hope so. Um, yeah. But I was down there for uh, Pokemon Go doing their uh, uh, research, their, their special research day down there, and <clears throat> and I managed to come away with like five shinies total, which that's pretty good. <laughs> cool. Because that's the thing when Pokemon Go does these things, you know, they'll they'll up the shiny rate for a bunch of for whatever Pokemon is featured. So, so nice. I, so I did okay, and I uh, told my friend about it. And she immediately called me a whore. <laughs> all in jest. <laughs> all in jest, of course. But Are you sure? I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He's sure he's just a whore. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean I mean most of my Instagram is about uh shiny hunting, Horse? so oh. <laughs> oh, but But yeah, while I was down there, I, I was walking around doing my thing. And this, this dad and two kids walk by, and I heard one of the kids say very loudly, "Man, he ugly." And at first <laughs> I was like, "Well, don't say that about your dad." And then I realized he was talking about me. Oh, oh my god! And I'm just sitting there like, "Okay, he's a kid. He he obviously doesn't know not to say that to somebody's face." Well, I guess technically he didn't. It was like, "Dude, no, <laughs> no, uh, dude." It's like it's like you little shit. Ah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I don't want to. I'm not gonna hate on the kid too much for it because he's a kid. Like he's a little kid. Yeah. You know. And then, and it reminds me of a thing that I did when I was a kid. Uh, when I was a kid, I was a scrawny little thing, and and I mean like actually scrawny, as in like, you know, thin and and very little fat on me, because mm. I ran around a lot. And at one point, uh, I don't remember it directly, but my mother told me there was a time we were in like a store or something. And I looked at a person who happened to be pretty large, and I told my mother, I don't want to be like that. <laughs> 30 plus years later, 
For those who have never seen me, I am, in fact, a large person. Uh, so, let's just say karma got my ass back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lordy. So, so how, how's the last two weeks been treating you, Michelle? Um, pretty good. My partner, um, he goes traveling. I, I don't tend to go with him because I... Well, I don't have a passport, and I haven't had the regular income until recently. Mm-hmm. So basically, I've had two weeks on my own. It's been great. Oh, wow. <laughs> so the, the job's been going well. I've just been worrying about taking care of myself and not worrying about anything else. So let the washing up build up a little bit, because he does it like every day. He doesn't do it very well. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, you can let it build for a couple of days. Have a proper wash-up session. Let it all dry naturally, and you don't have to take hours doing it. Yeah. It took me 25 minutes this morning to do to fill the rack up. It took me 25 minutes and wipe the sides. And like, he said, I've done the washing up and there's plates left. I'm like, why is there a plate left? If you've done it all, why is this stuff? Oops. So I've had none of that this last couple of weeks. It's been lovely. There you go. I mean, take, feeding, feeding myself, I can, instead of making you know a meal for one night, I've been making a meal for two days. I did a, oh, I did um got some fresh mints, onions, and I just basically made my own burgers. I like, should I cook them all and reheat them tomorrow? So now I'll save the ones I haven't cooked. Next day burgers, I'm telling you. It, they were actually a lot nicer the second day. So if you are one to make homemade burgers, mm-hmm. I yeah, they are nice and fresh. I would recommend making them the night before you want to cook them because I know the, the salt pepper, I actually put a little bit of mild chili in them as well. And something infused, it was much, much nicer. Hmm. I so shall have to try my, that. Yeah, that's my top <laughs> tip. It, yeah, it's literally just minced beef, onion, salt and pepper, and any other herbs or spices you want to throw in just to try it. You know. hmm. Hmm. And, and I am <laughs> furiously taking notes. Because <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, I wouldn't mind trying cooking new things in the kitchen. Like, like I saw this recipe for, I think it was like a taco casserole or whatever. Mm. And I can't seem to find it anymore, but I think I've got, <laughs> I've got the gist of it, like... You know, you take like uh, the tortilla shells or, or or what have you, and you layer it up like lasagna. And and they say you know like add tomatoes into it or, or salsa or whatever. And I'm like, I'm a wuss, so I'm not going to do either of those. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but for me, it would be like you know put the put the uh, tortilla, the taco meat, some cheese, and keep doing that until the top. And then yeah. and then once you know once it's all cooked up, let people add their own like lettuce, tomatoes, or whatever they want. So. Mm-hmm. That sounds yeah. nice. Yeah, but I, I um for the for the note, I fry them like literally spritz the um the pan mm-hmm. and just lightly fry them. But you can um grill or oven them, whatever's your preference Ooh. on the cooking. Yes, it's, yeah. it's been a while since I've tried to make my own burgers. Uh, I need to try that. Uh, oh God, one of the first times I actually tried it, this was a disaster for me. <laughs> on two on two parts. Number one, having never done it before, I made them a little too thick and they weren't quite oh. as done. As Ooh. I wanted them to be, and I didn't find out until it was too late. And Ooh. also, we didn't have any other bread in the apartment. So mm. I ended up using some raisin bread. <laughs> which, let me tell you, raisin bread, it, it's good on its own. It's good if you toast it, put some butter or some jam on it. That's good. But it's not good for burgers. <laughs> no shit. Just no, no. Ari was pissed <laughs> too. Because, <laughs> like, motherfucker, you wasted bread! I'm like, sorry! <laughs> uh, Are we talking, like, flat sliced or, like, hot, cr- hot cross bun type things? Um, we're talking, talking like, just sliced raisin bread. Nice. Yeah. Which, yeah. Oh, I, I should correct myself, cinnamon raisin bread. Oh, even better. Yeah, which, but not, again, not, is not with burgers. <laughs> no, no, learn that the hard way. Ugh. <laughs> uh. I don't tend to put mine in a bun anyway. I just like have beans and like I think I had the uh, yeah potato um, sweet potato wedges one day and then like curly fries the next. Yeah, just which mixed it up a bit. which we have honey wheat bread here. I might try it with honey wheat. Mm. So, I mean, I have other sandwiches yeah. with honey wheat bread and it's not bad. Uh. Yeah, but on the on the karma being a bitch thing, I um my family are all rather larger and I was um, quite a skinny thing. And someone like, asked me about, like, you know, what do you want to, you know, why are you running around, like, didn't eat enough, all this stuff. Like, oh, I don't want to be a typical spec. I, I now have podge. I, I have, I'm not as bad as my uncle and my dad. I've got to that level. My sister is a little bit larger than me. Um, but, yeah, I have podge. But, yeah, karma gets us all. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
and I think it got me the worst because I think I'm the biggest out of the three of us. Oh, I would God. imagine. <laughs> oh. Yeah, maybe. Oh, but um. Oh yeah. So so yeah. Also, a lot of political bullshit has gone on the past couple of weeks. I didn't put I didn't put in the main news articles. But there's there are a couple of things I wanted to touch on, like Trump continually wanting to close down the borders to Mexico because oh my God, brown people are coming to seek asylum, which is what it is. Did you see the Trevor Noah um, clip though? I have not. About there, I I I can't. I, I wouldn't be able to find it now. It's in my history somewhere. But basically, he was um, making up a report about uh, Mexicans, especially those in Tijuana, stealing the razor wire um, from the borders and using it for their own security. Okay, <laughs> I, I I have heard about this. I don't think I heard about it from Trevor Noah. Uh, one of my <laughs> friends actually lives around like in Tijuana, in Mexico, close enough to go to San Diego. And and she's told told us stories about that. I'm like, oh my god, that is fucking hilarious. That is. Ah. That's what Trevor just lost his shit when he was telling reporting on it. He's like, you know, it's... we're gonna build a wall and Mexico is gonna steal it. Yes. <laughs> and hey, you know what? Let him do it. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. You know, I mean, it just goes to show again, walls don't work. Walls don't work. You stupid treasonous motherfucker and i still and i still consider trump treasonous even though the Mueller report has come out or at least part of it has come out and yeah yeah he came out like a child telling his parents what's on his report card yeah yeah that's really what's in there yeah says that you know there there wasn't evidence but he's not exonerated i think is i think is how it was or whatever which of course oh i was exonerated for everything no you weren't let him have his victory lap, and then when all the other investigations, I think you only need one of them to come to fruition for him to get it to really something else. Maybe a couple for safety, but you know, let him have his victory lap. Yeah, yeah I'll buy him. Yeah, I, I hope so. Oh, I really, really <laughs> hope so, because this the man, the man, and the people who follow him and worship him are ruining oh. the planet. Not just yes. the country, the fucking planet. Yes. Ah. Uh. They used to call it global warming for a reason, people. Yes. I'm sorry, it's it's kind of one of my trigger points when people say, oh, we this, and then the American lives will be affected, like American people. Fuck off, climate change affects everyone. Mm-hmm. I'm part of the everyone. So yes, I get... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, well, what do you care about the planet? I'm one of the idiots who lives on it! Yeah. <laughs> I haven't even seen that movie, and I understand the reference. Mm. <laughs> oh, god damn. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, but there, but there was one thing that that I noticed right as I was putting news files together this morning, yeah. and I I just wanted to bring it up a bit. Um, if you if you if you read Vox, um, they they have a news story out about uh, disaster relief because as we know, because of climate change and global warming and all of that, those are those are the biggest. That's the biggest contender. Um, yeah. You know, we've had things like a bomb cyclone hit the Midwest, which, Oof, which yeah, I, how about that? Oh. Yeah, which, which, how close did it get to St. Louis? By the way, did it? Uh, I don't know. We just had like tons of rain. Okay. We didn't. We didn't have anything like crazy the last couple of days, but now all the rivers are gonna flood. Oh, fun! Oof. Uh, because, because yeah, bomb cyclone. Many cities in the Midwest are underwater. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, down here in the south of the U.S., we're still reeling from the storms and hurricanes, even after Hurricane, mm. you know, after Michael and and all of the other ones, and and an ongoing disaster, as 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 read on Vox, the ongoing disaster still underway in Puerto Rico, which experienced the deadliest natural disaster in U.S. history in 2017's Hurricane Maria and mm. last year's Hurricane Michael. They got double fucked, and not in the fun way. No. But Donald Trump's response? Well, they don't deserve money. They don't deserve it. They don't deserve it. They don't deserve it. Which, which, no matter what excuse he puts out, all I hear is, I don't want to help them because they're brown. I don't want to mm-hmm. help them because they're brown. Which, fuck you. Yeah. yeah. So, and currently Congress is at a stalemate over a multi-billion dollar disaster relief funding package after Trump made it clear that he doesn't think Puerto Rico deserves to get any more money. Trump told the Senate Republicans this week during a private luncheon that he thought Puerto Rico was getting too much relief. 
compared to other states. Too much bullshit. That is, that is bullshit. Correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't there like pallets upon pallets of shit just kind of sitting there, not being distributed, not doing, not not going to anybody, and 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 fucking celebrities are having to pick up the slack. Which okay, good for mm-hmm. them, but the p- job of the government is to support every citizen. Puerto Rico, while it's not a state, it is still a U.S. territory. Those citizens are fellow U.S. citizens. And Trump is giving them the bird finger because, oh, they're brown. Uh, yeah. Just, and and now, it seems like he's he's still keeping on this course, but by, you know, by not supporting this these, these bills, these packages, you know, one from the Senate, one from the House, of course. You know, they got to agree on all of that. And because it would give some to Puerto Rico. So, because he has such a hate boner for brown people living in Puerto Rico, people in the Midwest, people in the South, people who have been affected by weather over these past couple of years are going to get fucked over because OMFG brown people might get help. I want to punch him. Yeah. I I don't consider myself a violent person, but I just want to... And the thing is, I don't want to touch him. I just want to punch him, and that's like... Yeah, I, I, I just, I mean, having seen, like I said, I saw Captain Marvel today, and um, he has a power set that would help. Yeah. <laughs> you could punch him without hit, without touching him. That would, you know. That would, that would be amazing. Even, I mean, I don't even necessarily want to, like, stand over his, like, you know, body bludgeoning him. Just a punch. And I think if enough people get in the queue, that should ultimately do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, and, and of course... And of course, reading a little further in the article, of course, Republicans are attacking Democrats for playing politics with people's lives. Oh. You, you, no, no, you do not get to play that card, especially, especially bald baby eating fucker Rick Scott, who somehow got sent to the Senate, even though he is a massive douchebag. And, and he is quoted as saying, Senator Schumer stopped this bill. I don't know when we are going to get it done. Now let's remember when Sandy hit. He was very vocal. 91 days was long enough. Now we're what, five and a half months from Michael now? He's playing politics. Motherfucker. Mm. No. No, 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 no. See, the point of, whole, of this is Puerto Rico still needs help, you stupid, bald fucker. <laughs> Ay, mother, motherfucker. Uh, the the article does go on if if you if you want to look it up it's on Vox, uh you know about just look up Congress disaster relief in Puerto Rico. Um, it was posted on the 29th. Just oh my god, Cat, do you have any thoughts? I have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> that I used to live in Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, and I have very fond memories of living there. Um. And one of the things that I remember about living there was um, we would have blackouts and brownouts all the time, like all the time, because, and I didn't understand this as a kid, but I understand this now, that the power grid that basically the entire island functions off of um, was outdated and in bad shape when I lived there. And that Hmm. was, and when was that? Oh, let's see, the 90s. Oh, shit. (laughs) <laughs> um so like the fact that it was that bad and we consistently had brownouts like of course it was just a matter of time before something like maria happened where the entire power grid um got just completely destroyed in a storm which we never had any hurricanes while i was there and then as soon as my family moved they got hit by a hurricane so i kind of feel like we were the crux holding it together <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> Not to uh, make myself seem self-important or anything, but <laughs> there's never been a hurricane hit where I live until I don't live there anymore. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, the the power grid was already really terrible and in need of a lot of work. And, um, you know, even then, nobody gave a shit about Puerto Rico and there was a lot of, a lot of problems where we lived was on a base in the middle of a ghetto Mm -hmm. and there was a lot of uh, contention 
about the American base being there and um, like especially because we were in the middle of a ghetto there was crime around us and stuff and then crime filtered onto our base and it was yeah. weird um, but it, it was such a beautiful place and even you know living in the ghetto and stuff like that and it really makes me mad when people act as if Puerto Rico doesn't matter or that the people of Puerto Rico aren't U.S. citizens. I went to school with them. Yeah. Like, come on. This is not a difficult concept. Like, either we need to let Puerto Rico do its own thing and become its own country, or we need to start treating Puerto Rico like a state. Yeah. And I know yeah. that somebody just once again filed for Puerto Rico statehood. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, it'll never happen. And you know why it'll never happen? Because we don't want to have to change the flag. Lazy fucks. <laughs> Which, besides the the inherent racism rampant in our country, it would be way too hard to redraw the flag. So, in order to get Puerto Rico as a state, we'd have to like lose Alaska or something. Yeah. Which uh, I don't necessarily want to lose any state just to bring in another one. It's like, come on, let's let's just do it. Alaska uh. and Hawaii make no sense as states in the part as part of the United States. They are so far away. There is a whole country in between the uh, mainland U.S. and Alaska. Like, yeah, man. But Texas keeps threatening to file for its uh, it, uh, uh, secession. Yeah, so yeah. Maybe, maybe we let Texas do that. I don't know. <laughs> but we need to if we're going to keep trying to own uh, territory then we need to fucking step up as a country and stop discriminating and saying that, oh, well, they're just, you know, it's it's that that um, conservative mentality of, well, it, you know, poor people or brown people are just looking for a free meal. They don't want to do any work. Like, the, <laughs> these people have suffered and died and continue to do so because, you know, there's so much wrong with the infrastructure and it's it's only going to get worse if we don't have a lot of reform and nobody wants to pay for that no like puerto rico not. can't afford the reformations needed and the u.s doesn't want to give them more money because they're not all white because yeah just and also because elon musk or or jeff bezos or whoever fucking billionaire they want to be able to afford another yacht because hey guess what we can pay for it it's called raising taxes on the rich which of course jam did you want to do it because he may have to pay more taxes no fuck you <laughs> it's like rob them rob all the rich fuckers blind fuck them yep yeah. robin hood the fuck out of them i don't care yay hi nsa robin hood the rich i don't give a shit robin hood the rich yeah <laughs> uh. eat eat the rich that's a, we can do that, isn't that too. the phrase that's going around now is just eat the rich. Yeah, we Yay. can do that. Uh, although I would prefer not literally because it's not my thing. Mm -hmm. But if you want to, that that that's that's all on you. <laughs> I mean, what if the rich taste really good and we just don't know it? <gasps> There's only one way to find out. Nice. <laughs> Cannibalist. You, you, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I don't Did actually you? want people to eat other people. That's gross. Guys. Yeah, that is a little bit. And, and I was about to say, did I you know, have... I know where other people have been? Don't eat them; that's disgusting. <laughs> I was saying, did you ever watch Hannibal though? Because he made them look delicious. <gasps> oh my god, that show traumatized me so bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm all about, you know, like, oh, it's fine. There's a there, there's a show about a guy who eats people. That's fine. It's when they get to the point of the show where he cuts off somebody's legs and then makes them eat themselves. That's yes, where I draw the line on. That oh god. <laughs> Can I just say, can I just say, as an Eddie Izzard fan, yikes. Oh my god, it was, it was so fucked up. Oh my god. Oh, poor Eddie Izzard. Yeah. I, know, I haven't seen, I haven't watched the rest of season three yet, but um, yeah, no, it's not, and he's such a nice guy as well. Um, every time I've met him, he's always been so, even when he's been in a hurry, he's always been so gracious. Yeah, uh. so like that's where I had to draw the line at, at Hannibal was <laughs> Eddie is getting mutilated. It's it's the same part where I drew the line in the the second season of American Horror Story was that that chick who got all of her limbs cut off and then injected with a bunch of diseases. I'm like, nope, nope, that's it. Oh, oh lordy. <laughs> It, it, it was, that was where I drew the line was that level of mutilation. I don't know why I can handle everything but that. Well, uh, my mom's weird like that. Sorry, she uh, um. 
her thing is I hate oh decapitation oh decapitation really annoys guess what one of her favourite TV shows is yes it's the Highlander <laughs> <laughs> to be fair it's the Highlander yeah. <laughs> it's not that serious oh, yeah. or squicky or anything <laughs> no yeah. she doesn't like the film to be fair she's not she's never really sat down oh, with the movie but the TV movie. yeah uh, yeah. So so yes. So anyway, oh. back on topic. Yes. So we had one. Well, kind of. <laughs> but to sum up, sum, to sum up, help Puerto government. I know you're listening. Hi, 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 NSA. I think I said NRA okay. earlier, but they might be listening in too. I don't know. But no, you said NSA. Yeah. But um. But but hi, NSA. I know you're listening. You listen to everything. They you know, raise us. raise the taxes on the rich. The Make them pay for it. Well, it works. Well, they can they can do something, but anyway, they, point is they could listen in on the rich. Yeah, they could listen in on them. Maybe the, the, the NSA has better things to do than listen to our show. Yeah, probably, but who knows? <laughs> it's only because my dad worked for the NSA, and you know what the NSA was doing when my dad worked there? They were getting together on Friday nights and playing Dungeons and Dragons. Cool. Okay then. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of NSA, mind you, just the ones my dad was hanging out with. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they're the cool ones. <laughs> there you go. And, and then they played World of Warcraft together when that became a thing. Ooh. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. But, yeah. To, to, to sum up and reiterate again, tax the rich. Tax them harder. And if you can't tax them, Robin Hood their asses. Fuck them. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and take our break. When we come back, we will have our we will have the news. And of course, during the break, last week I put our shout outs during the during the break time. And and I hope that works out a little bit better for you guys. And that way, if one of us has a break, you know, like not, not a break, but a, a shout out that we want to put in, we can do that separately and, and it seems to work out OK. Um, so uh, we'll be right back. Hey, folks, we'll get back to the show in a moment. But first, I want to tell you about Patreon. Uh, Patreon is what I use to get around all of the YouTube ad- adpocalypse bullshit, and while I don't have a lot right now, every little bit does help, and if you like what you hear or what you see on any of my videos or podcasts, head on over there for as little as a dollar a month. You can get all of these things early before anybody else does, and you can get them completely ad-free. Yeah, I know YouTube right now is technically ad-free, but... At some point, I'm probably going to get big enough to where ads will start coming in. And those can be annoying, so you want to avoid that, right? If you go ahead and go now over to patreon.com slash gomer21xx, leave a dollar, five dollars, doesn't matter how much, you can get all of these, again, you can get them early, and you get them without ads. Even when I reach the point on YouTube to where ads can be put on these videos. So, it's a win-win. And you can even avoid the ads that go up on the Anchor versions that go out to all of the other websites that are out there. No ads. It's great. Uh, so that's patreon.com slash gomer21xx. Howdy folks, Gomer here, and here is my shout out for the week. Mine actually goes out to a YouTuber by the name of Nico BBQ, Nico BBQ. Um, he does a lot of gaming challenge videos where some of the challenges are just weird and off the wall for example uh he does mario videos where the whole point of his challenge is to not collect a damn coin in the game and for the most part it's doable actually surprisingly Uh, but there is one mario game where you cannot get through the game without collecting at least one coin um i'm not going to spoil which one it is because i want you guys to go watch them um they're pretty good they're pretty thought out very thorough and you know if you want to Go and check out the challenges and maybe try one for yourself. Uh, go check out his channel. Again, that's Nico BBQ over on YouTube. N I C O BBQ. And we are back from our break. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, you know, the shout outs, obviously, very good things. Otherwise, we wouldn't shout them out. <laughs> uh, so. So the big thing that, that we talked about before we hit the break, you know, involved, it involved Rick Scott, who is from Florida, and that ties into our first news story, which is out of Gainesville, Florida, which I think is about maybe three hours from where I am. Uh, so, so that's a lot of fun. Uh, a Krispy Kreme employee is in jail, police say, after police say he stabbed the boyfriend of a co-worker after an argument on how to make donuts. 
Gainesville police officers responded to the restaurant about 10 p.m. on March 27th and said they found a male victim lying on the floor with several stab wounds to his torso, stomach, and thigh. Officers applied a tourniquet and the victim was taken into surgery at a local hospital where he survived, which is good. According to the police department, Julius Irving, 32, had got into an argument with his co-worker over how to make donuts. The employee called her boyfriend to come pick her up, and when he confronted Irving about the argument, the officer said Irving tried to hit him. A physical, f a physical fight broke out, as opposed to a psychological one, and officers <laughs> said that Irving armed himself with a four-inch knife and stabbed the victim several times. Officers quickly took Irving into custody. They said he confessed to the stabbing. Irving is charged with attempted homicide, and it was booked into the Alach Alachua County Jail. And my first question is, holy shit, this would... Okay, okay. Why? Why? Are, 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 is, is, okay. The woman, uh, uh, the woman who works at the Krispy Kreme, I would imagine would know a little bit more about donut making than some random asshole. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Their co work, boyfriend of a co worker. Okay, they both work there. So I would imagine she knows as much as he does. Maybe more so. Maybe she's been there longer. I don't know. But, but, I, I'm I'm also seeing this as mansplaining gone way too goddamn far. This is this is one of the reasons why we hate mansplainers, especially when they when you have assholes like this running around. Just just no, you make a donut like this. No, you make it like this. No, 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 no. You go home. She starts to go home. Boyfriend's like, hey, what the fuck? What are you fuck doing there, man? Stab. Like the fuck. Besides, everybody knows you make a donut by punching it. <laughs> and thousands of JoJo fans are suddenly crying because they remember one particular character of theirs they, that they really love that got donated. I am sleeping in the doghouse tonight. No, 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 no. But seriously, like, it's just donuts. Now, see, this would never happen at the Dunkin' Donuts. As far as I know. Uh, Michelle, we're going to start with you. What do you think? Well, I was about to say, isn't Dunkin' Donuts where the cops usually hang out? So, you know, it's a bit safer there. <laughs> you would think. It's not the cliche. Um, I've worked in a um, franchise, uh, sorry, chain restaurant, and there is standard, like there's menus. There's, um, you have a, a standard. They, they tell you how the, the ingredients that go in it, how much of the ingredients, how to make it, any cooking times where relevant. Mm -hmm. I can presume somewhere like Dun Dunkin' Donuts that is, we have it here, so I don't, I don't know if it's fully international, but it's definitely something I've heard of, and I, I do enjoy them. I would yeah. assume it is a same sort of thing, where you have a company standard. If in doubt, check the book. So yeah. for them to, I don't know if he was contradicting the book, or if she was going from memory and he he wasn't he was misremembering or whatever but i guess i'm going in the experience i had in, in the total place i've worked but they have here here's how to make the, the thing if in doubt go look it up again it's always somewhere safe in the kitchen or just in the office just around the corner yeah so where is he getting off saying i know more than you when more than likely there's a book that explains it to both of them and said okay so this is where i was wrong you were wrong we were both wrong and it's also, he's an idiot because, okay, so if you're right or you're wrong, you don't bloody go stabbing up people because then you are definitely wrong. Yeah, even if you were <laughs> even, even if you were right in the in the first place, you lost that when you started stabbing. Yep. Uh, Cat, what do you think? Is donuts really the hill you want to die on? Like really, <laughs> really? <laughs> like, I know, right? I, I understand getting mad after the fact. Because somebody was messing with your girl or whatever, but like getting into a heated argument about the right way to make donuts is a stupid thing to get in an argument about. You know, we as human beings get in stupid arguments all the time, but like not enough to stab somebody over. Like, this is not a hill to die on. Like, <laughs> no. you know. The, the things that you should get into arguments about where you're willing to, like, clock somebody or take someone down should be, like, civil rights and and uh, stuff like that. Something that actually means a goddamn thing in, mm. in, the, in the, the long run. Something that's important. Not fucking how do you make donuts. Yeah, just... Uh. 
Uh, and I can't, say, a, I can't say donut without it coming out with that New Jersey, New York accent. I don't know what it is. It's, it's a fucking <laughs> donut, man. It's a donut. Donut. There's, there's uh. a great line in um, in Star Trek um, that you remind me of, basically saying um, uh, in Descent, where Data experiences emotions, and he's like, but the, the emotion I, I felt was anger, and that's a negative emotion. And, and Deanna's like, it doesn't have to be negative. You know, being angry and an injustice can lead towards a good a good thing happening because of that. Yeah. This is not an injustice. This is not a thing to get angry about, you know, and, and have a thing. But, you know, so the idea of, of being angry or something, yeah, like Kat was saying, you can be angry and not necessarily violent, but if you're in, if, if it is it to do with the injustice, I still wouldn't condone the violence, but at least it's a little bit more understandable than fucking donuts. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Uh, so this next one's out of Utah. Because oh poor Aaron, why do we just do this when Aaron's not around? <laughs> oh, sometimes we do when Aaron is around. Uh, I know, but oh dear. So this is a short one. Hazmat crews in Box Elder County were called out to a situation at the Love's Travel Stop in Brigham City Saturday. Uh, and then this is like a couple of Saturdays ago. I I weave two weeks worth of news stories into this. Initial reports to Hazmat crews was that a tanker truck was leaking an unknown chemical. But upon further investigation, hazmat crews discovered the unknown chemical was actually just water condensation dripping off the truck's cooling system. <laughs> As somebody who has driven trucks for a living, two things. One, good on you for, for taking precautions. You don't know. You don't check. You, know, you, don't, you don't try and check yourself. That's fine. It, it doesn't say who... It doesn't say who it was that saw it, if it was another driver or just a random Joe. We don't know. Um, but, uh, you know, so points for taking the precaution and calling the, the authorities, letting somebody know. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Um, but there is a simpler thing you really could have done and found the driver of that particular truck and asked them because <laughs> they probably yeah. would know. I mean, even my first time driving any kind of a uh, – any any kind of uh, thing, you know, um, you know, you're just something other than a box truck. I figured, okay, yeah. And even even if it's a hazmat tanker truck or whatever, those things are super tight. Like those are like meant to be liquid and airtight, so shit mm. doesn't go flying around everywhere. So, so yeah, if you're seeing it on there, you know, li logically it would be condensation. I mean, again. You did the right thing. Better safe than sorry. But next time, maybe talk to a few people before going to that particular thing. Just saying. Because I'm pretty sure they're out there and they'll be like, man, you brought us out here for this? Now you look like a dumbass and now you're, you, you know, now you're being read out on, on fucking news show. <laughs> uh, either of y'all got any thoughts on this one? This is this is because we have so many superhero origin stories that involve tankers <laughs> and like crazy chemicals. Like, stop me if you think I'm wrong here, but how many superheroes and supervillains have origins in some like unknown chemical? And so Oy. now we're all afraid of like any liquid that we see that we can't immediately identify. Oh dear. <laughs> I just I don't know, and um, feel free to correct me, Goma, because obviously you have the experience, but. Is it possible to get within a safe range, zoom in your camera, which you well, everyone has in their pocket, mm -hmm. and take a picture of the area that you're concerned about, especially if you can get close enough to the thing, and then maybe send that to someone who can like look at the picture and like determine if it's a hazmat situation? That actually is a good idea. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, condensation, I don't know if there's anything else that could look like condensation. Yeah. But, you know... It will certainly tell you if it's like you know a bit of bubbling or like actual leakage. Yeah, or or if just something's leaking through, which that doesn't happen really. Not mm. not not from a metal tanker. Yeah. You know, I mean, because presumably if there is leakage, there would also be um, obvious rusting, which op I'm assuming means that that tanker wouldn't be on the road. But no, if they somehow be. missed it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, just. Ugh. Uh, so, it, it, oh, go ahead. No, I was just saying, yeah, again, again, points for being cautious, but are, are there steps that you could have taken beforehand? Yeah, I know. 
Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna go back and and talk about uh, we're gonna talk about Disney for a little bit. Woohoo! And the story itself is out of Anaheim, but it covers Anaheim and and fucking uh, Orlando. Because Disney is eliminating smoking areas at its theme and water parks in California and Florida. Nothing about Europe or Japan or anywhere else they have theme parks. Hmm. The company said in a statement on Thursday that smoking also won't be allowed at the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex or downtown Disney in California starting May 1st. Smoking areas will be available outside the parks and those entertainment areas. Disney Springs in Florida... And the company's hotels will also also will have smoking areas. By the way, I have recently learned that Disney Springs is what downtown Disney in uh, Orlando turned into. I am mm-hmm. kind of disappointed because I liked the name downtown Disney. God damn it. Do they still have Pleasure Island? I have not been there since 2003. So, or, or, or maybe 2004, 2005. Somewhere around there. It's been mm-hmm. a while. Uh, but... So the smoking policy was part of several rule changes the company is making at its parks. And that's not the only thing it's make, the changes it's making either. Loose or dry ice won't be permitted for coolers or cooler bags. And Disney is limiting stroller sizes to 31 inches or 79 centimeters wide and 52 inches or 132 centimeters long. The company also said stroller wagons wouldn't be allowed after May 1st. Huh. So on the one hand, it's like, okay, I don't smoke. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if... I, I'm. I don't think Cat smokes, and I don't know if you smoke, Michelle. Nope. So, so as far as I know, none of us are smokers here. If, if correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so while this doesn't affect us directly, there are people in my life that would go to Disney. They would love to go to Disney, but they're smokers. Mm. Which, which I under and I understand the whole point. You know, you don't want you don't want people with asthma getting agitated around smokers. You know, the smoke itself is irritating to your lungs. Ha, <laughs> hacking, coughing, you know, goodbye mm. lung, that sort of that sort of thing. Um, you know, so I get that. But at the same time, your theme parks are also outside for the most part. And there's no reason why you can't still keep those designated smoke, smoking areas. You know, like, you know, inside the actual park. Because let me tell you something. Even though it has been a while since I have been to Disney, to any kind of Disney park or what have you, walk, walking from the entrance up at the front, and, and bear in mind, I'm just going by Disney World standards here, from the from the front all the way back to, I think the furthest back is probably Mickey's Toontown or whatever it's called nowadays. That's probably going to take a good five, maybe ten minutes if there's, if there's a lot of people. Hmm. And if you've never seen somebody jonesing for a smoke, telling them they have to wait 10 minutes to take a cigarette, eh, no, <laughs> they ain't going to have that. And, and I know somebody will be like, well, just take the train around. The train takes longer. <laughs> it's not meant to be a speedy thing. <laughs> uh, so, you know, and, and I found this out about smokers the hard way because I had to, because I was... I was um, I, I, I was uh, p- fingered to bring a bunch of my friends up from, from pretty much the same area back up here. And let's just say that turned into an all-day affair because at the time, I was very, very, very adamant about nobody smoking in my car. Mm-hmm. I, I had since eased up because of this situation. But when you're stopping every 20, 30 <coughs> minutes, maybe an hour for what should be a three- or four-hour trip – that's 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 how you know yeah smokers got a thing and some of them have it worse than others some of them are better but at the same time it's like i see what you're doing i understand it and i support you know you know eventually smoking itself as a thing being just you know no longer a thing you know i I support that but while we have it while we have people that are basically addicted to it let's let's cut them a little bit of slack too you know, you don't don't need to send them on ten minutes, or 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 or, or even what if they're in a line? If they're mm-hmm. in a line and and that hits, and it's like, oh god, you know. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure a bunch of them would tough it out because, oh my god, going on Space Mountain would be better than smoking at this point. But what if they can't do that? You know, there has counter to be... argument to every literally everything you're saying. Go ahead. Uh, Disney doesn't allow alcohol inside Disneyland. 
Mm-hmm. This is true. But we're, we don't make, uh, you know, they don't they don't go there out of their way to help, you know, you know, like we're, we're not making an argument that, oh, well, what if an alcoholic really just needs a drink? We don't care if the alcoholic <laughs> needs a drink. This is true. They're an alcoholic and they can just go back to the hotel. This so is also to true. me, like, so them, you know, trying to get rid of putting this ban on smoking as part of Disney, once again, trying to control its image because mm-hmm. Disney is primarily meant for good, wholesome family fun. Um, and they want that image of, you know, purity, basically. Yeah. And they don't mm-hmm. want to contaminate that with smoking and alcohol and other what we would consider vices. <laughs> Um, uh, so to me, it's just sort of like, it, it continues this illusion that they're trying to promote and it's, it's a really fake illusion. But on the other hand, as somebody who will spend weeks in misery, if they are around somebody who smokes, I'm all for it because (laughs) in every other place in the entire goddamn world, I walk around and I can walk by somebody who's smoking, have a reaction and then spend weeks trying to get over it. Uh, I I have a dude who vapes near my fucking desk Mm -hmm. all the time until I started having to wear a fucking breathing mask at work because my, my, my desk is near the door. So this dude thinks he can just stand in the doorway and be like, it's fine. I'm outside. I'm like, no, you're not. All that shit's blowing inside and into my lungs. And like every time this happens, I get bronchitis and then I have to go to the hospital and take medication for weeks and be sick for months and that is what like the risk is like it's not just oh we're gonna annoy some asthmatic who can easily walk away like smoking areas don't really exist the wind blows that shit all over the place um if it blows that shit into say something like a line where you're waiting for a couple of hours that's shit you're inhaling for a couple of hours Um, So it's not that I'm entirely unsympathetic to people's addictions and the fact that addiction is a disease. Um, It's just that I like breathing. (laughs) This is fair. (laughs) That's that's all it comes down to is me. And then I'm a grown ass adult who can take care of myself. If If there's some kid who has much, much worse asthma than me and they have a reaction, that becomes like a huge medical problem. Um, yeah. So yeah. for me, it's like, good, good, because you can smoke anywhere in the goddamn world as long as it's outside. So how about we have just this one place where you're not allowed to? And 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 actually, the walk to the front and out is so much longer than you think it would be. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not like a five, even a 10 or 15 minute walk, because if they do ban smoking um, from like uh, a downtown Disney say the one in Anaheim, that's like a good 30, 30, 40 minute walk just to get somewhere that isn't Disney. If you're inside the park to get outside the park and then get out of downtown Disney, like you've got to take a tram. It's insane. I'm not saying it's fair. It's definitely not fair, but it's much healthier um, for for literally everyone. Yeah. So mm-hmm. like if you're going to take a, a trip to Disney... Maybe maybe think about your life choices and you're continuing to feed that addiction and maybe consider quitting before you go because, like, your feet are already going to hurt yeah. just from the regular walking around. You don't want to have to, like, walk all the way out and all the way back. It's not worth it, dude. It is not worth it. You're going to save. You are already spending a fuck ton of money going to Disney. You don't want to have to add, like, the cigarette tax of the state of California on top of everything else. It's just not worth it. Which is all fair. <laughs> I promote. So that's, I, I, that's I also I propose a compromise. It. Well, well, yeah. one of two. It's, I pro- it's mm-hmm. not fair, but yeah. I kind of don't care. Yeah, and, and I think, and I think, like I, like I said, I, I do understand where they're going, and and I do, and yeah, you know, I, I'm I'm seeing on the on the both ends on this one. Um, so here's a compromise. Uh, if if you are sm- if you are a smoker, odds are you're addicted to the tobacco. They have chewing tobacco. Just keep mm-hmm. a cup with you and spit in there. That'll that'll ease that for a little while. You may get mouth cancer a little bit faster, but you know one cancer is going to kill you either way. So you know you're just trading one for the other, really. Um, but also on the other end, Disney. 
an idea that flash i don't know how practical this would be but like around like the perimeters the perimeter of the park you know not just the main entrance but like have little little smokers rooms like around the perimeter which still if you're going from the middle if you're going from like the castle or whatever that's still a hell of a trap hell of a trek Mm -hmm. but it may not it wouldn't be as long as going from one end all the way back to the entrance but Mm -hmm. But honestly, out of those two, this the chewing tobacco would probably be the better one, <laughs> uh, in terms of compromise. Because then you, because then, then the tobacco junkies get their fix, and nobody has to worry about you know accidentally killing an asthmatic. <laughs> so, but if you can quit smoking before you go, then do that. Yes. Yeah. Try, like try, yeah. because it's so expensive to be a smoker already. <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, it, yeah. It, like you don't want to be throwing your money at that because everything at Disney is going to be so fucking expensive already. Yeah. I, I know it's it's like me like just saying that as a non-smoker. I have no idea how fucking hard it is to quit, but if you can, you should try. Uh, I, I I've never smoked, but my mother is a smoker, and she has smoked mm-hmm. since I was you know ever since I've known. She's tried to quit a couple of times, but she always lapses back in. And she and the cigarette she gets end up costing her, I want to say close to a hundred. Granted, she gets two cartons Ooh. at a time, so still, it's still Jeebus. Hmm. Yeah, that's uh, my brother started smoking, and then he went to boot camp, and you can't smoke in boot camp. So oh he, no, he actually kicked it by going to boot camp, and then started smoking again after boot camp. Wow. Mm-hmm. Like, what the actual fuck is wrong with you? Jesus. You quit without having to be in a, uh, on patches or in a program or going to meetings or anything, you know, and it must have been really hard. And then he just started right back up again because he knew that once he was out of boot camp, he was going to be around a bunch of people smoking. So what was the point of not smoking? And I'm like, oh, your wallet, dumbass, your wallet. <laughs> That's the point. Yeah. Not dying of lung cancer. Like yeah. that's the point. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah. Um I, uh, I have a question. Okay. How much more addictive is your so because I I do know some smokers, my family were smokers. Um but I know they can go for a three hour journey without having to stop every half an hour. Um <laughs> the friends of mine in question were also were also druggies. They didn't have drugs on hand. Not not no. when I was driving them, thankfully. Uh, mm. you know, because the because um, well, the group that I was that I was bringing up was was a uh, was a group that a friend of mine from high school was part of, and she knows me well enough to know don't bring the illegal shit in the car. Yeah. So. So she knows well I mean, enough. Although, although at one point there was somebody who did actually break that rule, and well, let me just say, um, I got a contact high from meth one time. <laughs> Ooh. At least I'm presuming it was meth. Thankfully, thankfully, I was not driving. Ugh. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, but just, just I, well, what, I actually would have thought that Disney already had a smoking man. But just the idea that you're out and about with your family or, you know, your beloved or whatever. And surely just being there is the excitement enough without adding chemicals into your body. Uh, I just you think. I, I, like I said, I know people who have, like, sometimes have gone for like a day or so or, you know, whatever. You, you can do it. Yeah, but I'm just I, I I don't like smoking. I'm not asthmatic, um, so I don't have that issue. But I'm just like I don't like smoking my face, and I don't you know if I wasn't stuck in a queue for however long, I wouldn't want you know people that around me. So yeah. I'm like I, I'm definitely of the um, and especially because we do have a total smoking ban now. It's like you know you can walk into a building and not get assaulted by smoke. Yes, there are smoking areas outside. Mm-hmm. And yes, I can see a point about if you're outside anyway, why not? But there are children running around, and it's, you know, if you can't go that long without having one, then, you know, maybe think about spending your money on, like I said, like, think, maybe think about you might spending your money on sorting that out before you're spending your money on the Magical Kingdom. There you go. <laughs> ah. So, yeah, our next one, we're going across the pond. Well, for, in mine and Cat's case, anyway. Um, uh, so this, this one is out of the UK. Uh, a man who was filmed f- swallowing a live goldfish at a fun fair and washing it down with a beer has been fined 300 pounds for animal cruelty. That is the yes. symbol for pound, right? 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, Josh Coles, 27, from Washfield near Tiverton, was filmed in September 2018 putting the fish he won in his mouth. Ex- Exeter <sighs> magistrates heard Coles was amused and bemused by the investigation, saying it was only a goldfish. <laughs> he admitted causing unnecessary suffering to a protected animal. Wait! 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> Swallowing a live goldfish. Okay, that's horrible on the goldfish. Shouldn't do that. No, no, that's just no. You gotta cook it first. Um, <laughs> but I had no idea it was a protected animal. Um, it might be the fact that because then um, there's you know RSPCA protections and certain things. I don't know. I don't think it's on an endangered list. At least not that I'm aware of. But it might be that you know, especially if it was still in the fairgrounds, then that there might be rules on that like a blanket rule maybe if and, and if that's the case then okay but uh because i'm sitting there thinking wait can't you get those for like two for a dollar at the pet smart or something i i don't i don't <laughs> i do have mild allergies so i avoid anywhere with like full of hay and stuff just just that's what threw me off okay the 14 <laughs> second long video posted by coles's girlfriend showed him holding the fish in his right hand before putting it into his mouth the clip showed he then drank half a pint of beer to swallow it before opening his mouth to show his friends that he had gulped it down. He was filmed at the Bridgewater Fair in Somerset, which took place between the 26th and 29th of September. Uh, vet David Martin said the goldfish was still alive when it was swallowed, the court heard. Oh. Uh, prosecutor Lindy I'm Meyer... drunk. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh, definitely. Um, if, the, if the stomach juices didn't kill him, the alcohol did. Uh, uh, prosecutor Lindy Meyer said Coles, a tree surgeon by profession, was egged on by two other people who laughed as he carried out the act. He caused the death of the animal, she said. No shit. Uh, a probation officer said Coles was a class clown who showed off in front of people and he was embarrassed and ashamed by what he had done. You know, I, I, I was friends with the class clown in my graduating class. I don't think he would have swallowed a goldfish. <laughs> not not wholesale. He may he may he might have put it in his mouth for a couple of minutes and then put it you know put it back in water or whatever and traumatized the poor thing, but he wouldn't have swallowed it. Uh, solicitor Jeremy Tricks, defending, said Coles had been diagnosed with ADHD, depression, and anxiety. Uh, Coles was sentenced to a 12-month community order with 200 hours of unpaid work and five days of rehabilitation. He was also ordered to pay 300 pounds with an with an 85 pound victim surcharge and was given a five year ban from keeping fish 80 an extra 85 for a vic, victim surcharge yeah you should I'm not sure. I don't know who would have gone that but okay uh, okay <laughs> speaking after the hearing RSPCA inspector John Pollock said the goldfish would have suffered a great deal how do you know how do you know sir I mean, I think we can all agree. Swallowing a live goldfish, not good. I, I think we can agree on that, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so, but, and, and yeah, doing that and, and facing some sorts of consequences for it, sure. Okay. I mean, even a fine. Fine. All right. Whatever. You know, you, you did swallow a living animal and you, it looks like, uh, uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, he, he was at a fair, which means little kids probably saw it. And you probably kind of made them just, like, kind of be traumatized. Like, um, you know, just a little bit because dude swallowed a goldfish. Uh, but some, you know, should he, should, he, should he have had to pay the extra 85 pounds? I don't think so. Uh, the community order with 200 hours of unpaid work. Wow. And five days of rehabilitation. So 200 hours of slavery, basically. <laughs> It's what it is. Uh, I would community call it that. service. It's it's a it's a it is a thing. It is, yeah. It is used as a deterrent. Yeah. It's it's just the way it it's just the way it's worded that 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 yeah. got that on me. Uh, five days of rehabilitation. Yes. I could just see it. Just be like five minute meeting with a dude. You're gonna swallow a fish? No. <laughs> All right. Here you go. Because <laughs> how much rehabilitation do you need? Especially <laughs> if, if it sounds like this is the only time the guy has done it. Mm. So it's like, I mean, yeah, some 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 corrective lessons, but I don't know about full on rehabilitation like that for five days. Definitely, it's just oof. I mean, hell, the first time I got a ticket, I only had to take maybe 
two or three night classes of, of like driver safety classes or whatever. Yeah. And, and, and no ban on driving. So, hmm. yeah. Uh, I think mean, that's depending on what you get ticket for though, isn't it? Yeah. 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 But on, yeah. on the, uh, the point of the kids being tra- possibly traumatized, depends how old they are. The little kids, they may not have fully understood because depending on how tall he is. If they were like, um, you know, early mid teens, they'd be like, oh, dude, that's sick. I'll do it again, blood. Do it again, blood. This is also true. Because uh, <laughs> that's the little shit. Especially next yeah. to uh, <laughs> uh, Kat, what do you have to say I- about all this? Guys, don't eat fish. <laughs> like pet fish. Like that's that's like it's such a weird line that we're drawing here. But like that's the difference is like there's eating fish and then there's pet fish and like never the two shall meet. He didn't even have any chips. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. It's like so um, oh. So but like you know, if there's something even if you don't consider <coughs> Uh, like pet fish as being intelligent or you know protected or anything they're they're still living creatures so maybe don't swallow them whole and yeah let's... Don't get in trouble like a fucking moron no yeah uh. I definitely don't film that shit come on uh. have have a look you know like some of some people just don't have that part of their brain that goes stop <laughs> yeah could this be misconstrued? Is this the right thing to do? Am I going to potentially get in trouble? And then, uh, you know, if the answer is, you know, yes, then maybe don't do that thing. But some people just don't have that part of their brain that makes them go stop. Yeah. Hammer time. And see, the thing is, thing is, I have that part, but sometimes it takes a vacation. That's why I have Becky. She's my backup. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, did Becky do? Uh, yeah, uh, pretty much. Um, and, but then sometimes she does surprise me, so. So it's not 100% perfect. Uh, next one comes out of Mesa, Arizona. A uh, photo appearing to show a racist promposal. Yes, an actual promposal. I don't remember that term being in high school. We just we just went up to somebody and stammered and awkwardly asked the person that, that, you know, that we wanted to take to prom. They said yes and then used us to get in and dance with everybody else and just basically tell us to fuck off. I mean, what? Uh, <laughs> but anyways, a photo appearing to show a racist promposal is making its rounds online. In it, a poster says, If I was black, I'd be picking cotton. But I'm white, so I'm picking you for prom? I, I feel dirty just saying that. Uh, sources tell Arizona's family the girl in the photo is a student at Mountain View High School. The school district sent Arizona's family a statement saying, Mesa Public Schools and Mountain View High School do not condone the contents of the message posted on a student's personal social media account. The parents of the students involved have been notified. Good. At first, when I saw it, I was just, like, disgusted, said 18-year-old Katrina Kelly. She switched schools this year, but was a student at Mountain View. Kelly said a friend sent her the promposal photo. God, that's so hard to get used to. And she decided to post it on Twitter, like you do. I did it. I think they did it because they thought it was funny, Kelly said. I really don't think they thought about the consequences of what could happen if they posted it. Yeah, that that seems to be a thing, you know. Maga hats, excuse me. Mm. Uh, Kelly said the girl in the photo originally posted it on Instagram, but people there took screenshots of it as it circulated online. Because of course it does. Because when you do something that is that fucking racist, or even, I mean, and and, and bear in mind, con- compared to all the other racist shit that goes on in this country, this is tame in comparison. But even this will still get, this will still go viral. Naomi Whedon goes to a different school, but said people all across the district were ta- were talking about it. The fact that the girl was okay with it, like posted pictures about it, was fine about it, bragging up that she got prom posed or whatever, is just like stupid. She said. It's directed to a certain racial group, and it's a racist comment directed towards slavery, and that could be such a touchy subject for a lot of people, Kelly said. Okay, to to Naomi Whedon and Kelly... Katrina Kelly, you two, you, 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 are, you are good people. You, you will be fine people. To the idiot who decided to, to, to prompose this way, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Oh, oh, god damn! Although, in, 
Although, although to take it back to to the questioning why people film or put this kind of stuff online, in fairness, if nobody did things like this, people like Nash and me would be out of a job. <laughs> Yo, just saying. Prob- well, Nash definitely, me mostly. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Kat, Kat, we're going to start off with you. What do you think? I genuinely don't understand why people do this. And... <sighs> You know, like you said, it it's not that bad in the grand scheme of things, but it is indicative of a pattern of, um, you know, a complete lack of understanding the importance of racism or the, um, the effect of racism, you know, <laughs> like... Racism is indeed a very delicate topic, and it's mm-hmm. not because people are too sensitive. It's because people die. Yeah. People die from shit like this. Like, racism kills Yeah. every fucking day of the week. Somebody dies because of some <laughs> racial bias, whether it be because somebody can't get adequate medical attention because doctors don't listen to black women or because a cop shoots somebody you know because they're black and assumes that they're the criminal racism kills Mm -hmm. um and it is one of the darkest parts of our history and it's not even in the past it's something that we continue to grapple with every single day and and it's really easy for a bunch of dumb white kids who have never experienced the the um the negative side of racism they can they can just read about it online but they don't have to experience it and it's really easy for them to make a joke about it and not understand why that it, why it's a problem for other people and it should not be that way we as a country should understand by now that racism is not a punchline that it is something horrendous that isn't going away anytime soon because of people like that who find it funny to joke about slavery um it's so it's 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 so frustrating that you know people are gonna say well they're just dumb kids they don't know what they're doing they people know yeah Uh, they're old enough not dumb kids who don't know better these are Mm -hmm. you know with with the media the way it is now with the internet and and our ability to see any piece of information we want at any time you know younger younger people the generation younger than us they have the ability to learn right from wrong much faster than we ever did because we Mm -hmm. didn't have the internet the way Mm -hmm. that young kids today do now like we didn't have the internet until I was in high school. And even then, we were told repeatedly, you know, don't believe anything you read online. It's all, you know, it's all yeah. just lies and stuff. So, like, they they have access to as much information as they could possibly need to understand the world and how people function and what is harmful. And they continue to do shit like this, not because they're young and dumb, but because they've never had to experience the consequences of their actions. And so now they're learning the hard way, but some other dumb kid is going to do the exact same stupid fucking thing because they also haven't had to experience the consequence of their actions, even though they can read about some dumb kid doing this. Yeah. Uh, And then they go on to start 4chan campaigns against people who are rightfully calling out famous voice actors. I mean, what? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, These are the dumb kids who are going to go have kids of their own and if they don't grow up between now and then they are going to raise more little racist shits yeah and, and it's it's difficult to say you know we don't we don't know anything about these you know these kids as families and stuff but those families are probably pretty fucking racist too and they probably come from a racist little town where that's all they know and so it's not necessarily their fault that they were raised to think a certain way but when you have access to all the information in the entire world in the palm of your hand you have every ability to change how you think and how you choose to act based on the knowledge that you have gained and that's part of like being human is we all fuck up we all make mistakes we all have biases and we're all probably a little bit racist and 
the difference is, is that we learn that we're wrong and then we act on it. And then we stop being that way. And if we can't change the way we think, we at least stop saying this fucking shit out loud to get ourselves in trouble. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's, it, it makes all the difference in the world because I know that I have biases and I, I look at people and judge them, but I don't open my fucking mouth about it because I'm aware that that's my, that's my bias, that I'm being judgmental and I don't have the right to call somebody out on their shit when I've got all my own shit going on. And so like, even if you can't change your, your mindset or whatever, don't fucking openly do and say shit that you know is wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh. What about you, Michelle? I think Kat said everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, we, we don't really have prom. Um, like, we occasionally have a school disco. Um, so the, the whole big deal of it is um, not something I can really relate to. Yeah. I think it's uh, they're getting more more like it now. That Actually, there's a thing that I've noticed the kids wearing recently, which I love. And I, I was never done when I was at school. And they're basically wearing levers jumpers. So they've got like their school name, the year, and then I'm presumably the name of their class inside the numbers. And I think that's the cool. That's cool. Hmm. So I don't know. I don't know if they're doing like um, you know, they're starting to do more formal school dances or anything like that. But yeah, don't don't be don't be a racist idiot. Don't you know? There is um, I used to be on a fan forum, and there was a and I'm not in any way disparaging on the people who have lived with this condition but she used to write crap on the wall like you know some of the stuff yeah and then she'd be like oh never mind it, it's just my asperges now as i understand asperges it is a social disorder that you know sometimes you do miss the cues my argument and a few of us we all kind of became google experts a little bit on it mm-hmm. was if you're in a verbal situation you're going to probably say something you probably shouldn't and maybe don't recognize to bring it back immediately. If you're in a situation where you're writing shit down, maybe get someone to else to have a quick look at it for you or reread it yourself. Maybe give it a couple of passes before posting it. Yeah. And, and then she was like consistently writing, you know, I, I can't remember actual examples. It was a few years back, but she was consistently writing crappy stuff. And then, so, oh, sorry, it's just my asperges. And the first couple of times we were like, okay fine and then it kept happening and we were just like no this isn't this isn't cool so yes it, it, it is related because this person wrote that sign mm-hmm. took a picture of it with them holding it and then posted it in public there is a three-part process that at, no, at any point they could have gone is this a good idea yeah could have gone through at least two more people buddy <laughs> yeah <laughs> Just saying. So, and again, I'm not, um, in, to go to my earlier point, I'm not disparaging against people with Asperger's. I know at least one person who has it. And, in, you know, that's not what I'm disparaging against. I'm disparaging against writing crap and then blaming a thing. Yeah. Or writing crap and not giving it another pass. Right. <laughs> uh, so, yes. You, you wrote the racist thing. Well, I have Asperger's. It's like, that's not an excuse. You still wrote the racist thing. <laughs> it's a communication disorder, it. not a racist disorder. <laughs> From what I understand, yeah. at least. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway. Uh, our, la- our last one. This one I just put in here because I wanted to do a dramatic reading of it. Because we, we all know One Million Moms. The, the online group that not, has nowhere near One Million Moms. Because one million moms have a, you know, one literal one million moms have literally better things to do than come up with bullshit like this. And as have either of you seen the new one of the new uh, Kit Kat ads? No, I have ad block. <laughs> ah, it's, it's OK. It, it's probably on YouTube for those of us who haven't seen it. Um, but they they saw it and they decided one million moms decided oh we've got to put out a new campaign over it because this offends us because of course you do you can't spit in the wind without offending one million moms and then they call liberal snowflakes what the fuck anyway one million moms are they like uh mom's net in the uk like uh, a watchdog group type of thing i think so yeah okay um, so anyway 
<clears throat> Kit Kat has launched a tasteless marketing campaign full of sexual innuendos. The inappropriate song playing in this commercial is called Work It by artist Missy Elliott and has no place in a candy bar commercial. This song is about sex and the lyrics are extremely offensive. The song includes a word for male genitalia that is beeped out by an elephant trumpet. If you got a big, let me search it. Everyone knows children repeat what they hear. The focus of the commercial is the sexual message and not the product itself. The advertisement shows an unwrapped candy bar and briefly includes their logo at the end. But not once is Kit Kat audibly mentioned during the irresponsible commercial. Because we know what fucking Kit Kats look like, you idiot! It's 2019, we know what a Kit Kat is! We don't have to hear, oh, this is a Kit Kat. We see it! Even blind people will understand. Oh, this is a Kit Kat commercial. That's all you have to tell them. Oh, hey, maybe I want some goddamn Kit Kats. Like, and 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 you really you're gonna complain ab- about this song using sex to sell chocolate? Really? <laughs> well, welcome to 2019. Where were you back 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago? They've always been using sex to sell things. Yeah. Like, what the hell? And if you don't want, and if you don't want children watching that commercial, don't let them watch the commercial. It's that simple. Just tell them no. In fact, we live in an age where we don't even have to watch the commercial. You know, mm-hmm. like 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 Michelle said, we have AdBlock. It's 2019. AdBlock exists. We don't have to watch it unless we go search it out. And you know, I mean, I mean, just goddamn. Ah. Mm. Uh, uh. So there was that. <laughs> that happened and while my voice recovers uh, uh, do either of y'all have any thoughts on this yes um, <laughs> so, so Cadbury's um, they have one of their snack treats is fudge and it's like a couple inches long of two, three inches long depending on what size you get and their ad campaign and this is the one that was playing when I was growing up as a kid in the 80s a finger of fudge is just enough to give your kids a treat. What? <laughs> oh, no. Wow. There is more lyrics. A finger of fudge is just enough until it's time to eat. It's full of coverage goodness and um, you know, it's basically about being a sweet treat. But that is the first line. A finger of fudge is just enough to give your kids a treat. Oh. Which I think we'll do at the end. <laughs> <laughs> a finger of fudge. Oh, my. <laughs> oh. Also, also, on the um, sex to sell anything, I would also encourage you to check out um, Cadbury Flake adverts, mm-hmm. um, which is only the crumbliest, flakiest chocolate, uh, which is a very innocuous um, tagline. But the adverts are always a pretty young woman, and depending on the model, sometimes they um, stick out their tongue before starting to bite down the chocolate. And Love yeah, it. they there have been sort of um, parodies and. You know, playing up the idea that that is quite, uh, yeah, because they're not, un- not they're not unattractive young women either. Yeah. Uh... So yeah, sex has been selling chocolate for a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, how about you, Cat? It's funny to me to latch on to like Kit Kat commercials. I don't know if you've ever seen a Hardee's commercial. A what commercial? Sorry? A Hardee's. It's a. It's a. It's a food chain here also called carl's jr um their commercials Mm. are literally always like half naked women like on the hood of a car like really seductively eating a cheeseburger (laughs) like she's about to like put a dick in her mouth that is every (laughs) single commercial (coughs) for hardy's literally every one of them is like that um there's also the double mint twins yeah (laughs) So, like, who gives a shit about Kit Kats? Like, <laughs> I, like, what, think of the children is not, is not a valid excuse. Every, every other fucking commercial is either sex or, like, old people who can't hold on to things. It's like, there's only two kinds of commercials, guys. Pretty much. 
<laughs> or like children's toys with just like loud screaming children. Like, yeah. Okay. yeah. Three kinds of commercials. Um, and none of them are good. Commercials are just generally bad to begin with. Yeah. Um, and then we get closer to the Super Bowl and the ads get kind of good, but still not great because there's always a fucking couple of weird ones. Yeah. The point here is, is that, again, is this the hill you want to die on? Do you really have nothing better going on in your life? Nothing more important at stake than, like, getting upset about a Kit Kat commercial? Because the world is on fire! The yeah. world is on fire. Uh, everything's shit. And you care about the Kit Kat commercial. I care about, like, prescription drug prices and Puerto Rico and, you know, like, real-world problems. I have more, like, personal problems going on in my life that nobody else in the fucking world gives a shit about, but I care about because they're real problems, and fucking Kit Kat commercials are not among them. <laughs> no. Guys, it's not that hard. Just don't watch the commercial. Or don't watch whatever TV station puts the commercial on. Exactly. It's not that hard. No, it's not. And it and right now, the only problem I have with Kit Kat is the fact that I don't have one. Yes, That's my only problem. <laughs> Although I would... also, oh my god. Okay, so <laughs> years ago, in Panama City, Florida, there no Panama City Beach, Florida, to be exact, uh, there was there was a seafood place called Dirty Dick's Crab House. <laughs> their slow their tagline was, "I got my crabs at Dirty Dick's Crab House," <laughs> and I have pictures to prove this. Awesome. <laughs> and wow. what's funny is I, I mentioned at the, at the top of the show that I was down at Panama City Beach for the Pokemon Go thing. There, There is a place down at Pier Park that's called Dick's Last Resort. And I'm sitting there thinking, you know, that's probably what happened to Dirty Dick because his crab shack is gone. And now he's had to open up a bar. So and that's, his, that's his last thing because if that fails on him, he's dead. <laughs> uh but yeah, just I, I I would have loved to have seen one million moms react to dirty dicks because that would have been amazing. Oh my god! <laughs> but there's there's also the thing of what happens when something is banned or someone tries to ban something. What happens every single time someone tries to ban something? We go get more every of it anyway, out of fucking spite. Or everyone flocks to the thing. Yeah. I hadn't heard about this Kit Kat, Kit Kat thing. I might go and look up the commercial myself in a minute once we've wrapped up here because I'm now curious. Yeah. You're bringing attention to the thing. All the thing. <sighs> it's, it's like at least once a year, like, people get up in arms about, like, Starbucks not having enough Jesus on their on their cups at Christmas time. So then uh. they're like... All the bleeding heart liberals go out and just get more Starbucks than they already buy just to spite them. That's, that's yeah. what's going to happen here. You brought attention to a commercial and now everyone <laughs> is going to go watch that commercial and then they're going to go fucking buy a Kit Kat because they're going to be at the store later and go, oh yeah, Kit Kats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's like kind of related because I was like, um, I know for a certain you know certain people that the the song that got banned was the song that was their number one. Um and he's like you listen to music, you listen to the songs that were banned back in the you know seventies sixties, seventies, eighties, and then you listen to songs that are on the radio today. It's like I don't know if we've come a long way or gone backwards, but yeah, the stuff that they were like traumatized before back in the day is like baby you know, you can listen, you know, let the baby listen to it because the, the shit that's playing right now is just is is worse. So I don't know if it's like an escalation of trying to make. Oh, I'm trying to find my point. Shit is getting harsher. Like you know, you, yeah, they're still bleeping stuff on the record. We have the radio on at work, and they're still bleeping certain songs out, which they play and I, i'm like i was like was it me even listening to my thing or was it actually on the radio and i think no it's like certain radio edits for certain things um like what is the point of the radio edit when you're already filling in the word like the radio edit sometimes makes it sound worse oh yeah definitely and it's like i mean like the song my neck my back i like that song because it's quite sex positive mm -hmm. and, and kind of fun but it's like the bleeping doesn't help because you're still talking about, you know, 
oh, the lady's getting some. It's still, if, if you know what it's about, you, you, you can't unhear it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Uh, but it's just like, oh, oh no, this is this is bad. Oh, turn on the radio, stop being a baby. Yeah. Like, oh. Of course, nowadays, you, you, nowadays we could just bypass that and just we'll look it up on YouTube. Like, yeah, and it's like things are. I'm not saying I des- definitely disapprove of the music getting necessarily rude or whatever. Like, I don't think it's necessary to have like all the swears in the you know, the non radio versions. But it's like, I don't. It's it's. All the stuff that has gotten more and more sweary stuff I don't is you know stuff I don't tend to listen to anyway. Yeah. But when you when you look at those songs that have been banned in the past and you listen to them today with modern ears, it's like, damn, this is tame. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, so with that, we're gonna take our, our not so tame asses out of here for this time. Uh, we we are coming up on episode two hundred. Holy shit, that stuck up on me <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> and in fact, in fact, the only reason I'm remembering right now is because Michelle reminded me of it before we started recording. I'm like, oh <laughs> shit, 200! Oh fuck! Uh, we'll we'll yeah. have to plan out some kind of thing. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, speaking of Michelle, if we wanted to find Michelle on the social media, where could we find her? Uh, you can find me on you- the YouTubes and um, Twitters, both at Phoenix11. Well, Phoenix11 is P H E O N I X. One one, and I have recently had a couple of unboxing videos, so there's actually some new content on there at the moment. Mm-hmm. So uh, feel free to check that out. Yes, uh, but don't need to do anything else. There we go. And Kat, if we wanted to find you on the social medias and all of that, where could we find you? You can find me um, on the social medias over on Twitter at LabyrinthCat and Facebook.com slash NerdistCat. And if you happen to be bored and want to check out my other shows, I do What the Fuck with Josh Hadley over on 1201beyond.com and Nerd to the Third Power, which is on YouTube and iTunes. So check them out. Sweet! And if you want to find me on the social medias, you can find me on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, YouTube, as long as the URL still works, at gomer 21 X. If you're listening to this on the YouTube, that means you're listening to this this show on its own YouTube channel. You can also find the show for download on all your favorite podcast apps, Podbean, Stitcher, iTunes, etc. Um, and that's thanks to Anchor, which which allows me to put this up there. And not only that, you know, as, if you listen to it on uh, on any of the audio sites, you also get a little tidbit about what Anchor is about, and uh, that helps get a little bit of money in so the more people who listen the more money we can make from this yay so anyway so if you want to have it to download just go hit up one of those podcasting sites um and you can also listen to this and a bunch of other great shows over at rtgomer.com we we actually do have regular updates surprisingly because you know we still have people that are still putting in the time and money and effort and it's it's really good and i honestly don't say it enough but um you know, with me being having been mostly kind of out of action for the past two, two and a half years, for the most part, you know, those guys helped keep the site going a little bit with their, you know, in terms of content. And to to all those guys, to uh, I think uh, Diva, Mikey, C. Farah, uh, just to name three right off the top of my head, you know, those guys helped keep it keep it alive and keep it going. And uh, I never really properly thanked them enough, so I'm going to do it here on the air because, uh, yeah. Uh, my my heart is filled with 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 yay, um, <laughs> <laughs> what? But, but yes yes at rtgomer dot com is where you can find all of our stuff there, um, and and of course if you want to just find me on YouTube and the Gomer two one double X does work as a URL just look up Gomer the Ranting Thespian that's my oh. personal channel where I am putting up uh, highlights from my Blaster Master zero two run that I streamed a couple of weeks ago, um, they're going up 20 minute chunks per day uh just because i don't want to have somebody to look at it and be like five hours no fuck that shit <laughs> <laughs> so you know it, it's it's a little bit of a thing and i'm gonna try and get back into streaming i kind of fell off this last week but um uh twitch.tv slash gomer 21 double x i will try and stick to the schedule that i've been i may switch to a later schedule just so you know, just to try different things, different audiences and all of that. And I am also rambling. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. If I have forgotten something, it's probably going to be in the doobly-doo. No big deal. <laughs> so with that, I want to thank you guys for listening. This is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian, with Michelle and the cat, signing off. Bye.